Chair, Honorable Ministers, uh, gentlemen and ladies of the press. Um, <clears throat> just like, like I've done over the last few days, I'll pick up one topic and try and address it in a bit more depth. Um, today, we'll deal with the issue of testing. And getting more people tested is something that is being talked about globally. And you would all have been following this conversation. This is exactly what we're trying to do too, improve our capacity to test, but we must do so safely. And we must make sure that in the effort to do it quickly, we maintain the due diligence and make sure that every test that we provide to every Nigerian, when it's negative, it's negative. When it's positive, it's positive. So as much as speed is important, safety is also important. And we have to find the balance between these two. While some global bodies have advised everyone to test, 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 the realities around the world are not the same. The world is different. The circumstances are different. And Mr. President asked us not to look east or west, but to find the right solutions for our country, considering the circumstances in our country. So we cannot raise expectations to unrealistic limits. We keep pushing step by step to improve our testing capacity. It's not an easy process that you can switch on and off. We're not just limited by funds. We're not just limited by infrastructure. But the biggest limitation is the human resources, the people that have already been trained in molecular diagnostic uh, testing. This is not something you can pick up people, volunteers up, and ask them to go into the lab and start testing. It's a very complicated process, one that we are doing. The people doing this are the same people doing the actual testing. So we have to find a balance at the moment between building capacity, increasing throughput, and actually assuring uh, testing. So we have, over the last few days, issued a case definition that has been widely circulated to the states and asking our colleagues across the country to adhere to this case definition, to test, to test only those that are, have symptoms, respiratory symptoms plus fever, that have either returned from travel, which is now a declining proportion, those that have had contacts with cases, or for those that there's no other underlying reason for having these symptoms. This case definition might uh, change over time as we increase our capacity, but in the short term, we need to make sure that we are focused on those that need it the most. To date, we have tested about 4,000 people, and we continue to drive up this number. We have fulfilled every requirement for a test, so there's nobody that has come forward. Sometimes there have been some delays, but every single sample that has come forward has actually been tested. Currently, we have added one more lab this morning over the last few days, so we now have eight. Uh, the reason is that now three labs working independently in Lagos. Um, the um, Lagos University Teaching Hospital, which you knew about already, the Nigerian Institute for Medical Research, and now the Biosecurity Center in Lagos that used to work with Luth. Uh, in collaboration have now completely se uh, separated. So we have now three labs working independently in Lagos. So we now have a total of eight. Um, like I said yesterday, Ibadan and uh, Abakliki have recently been activated. Uh, today, we're activating a second lab in Abuja, the Defense Reference Lab, uh, to support not only the armed forces, but everyone uh, around that area, their families, and everyone else that uh, can access that, and we will work with them to scale that testing. The next uh, town that we'll be going to will be Kano. Uh, so between Sunday and Monday, we hope to activate Kano, and from there start a series of labs in the northern part of Nigeria to make sure everyone has access to the cl lab closest to his or her location. In addition to all of this, we have some exciting proposals that we're working through with the private sector. The private sector has really come on board uh, to support us in doing this, not just the private sector, some other uh, public sector organizations that have private sector affiliations, the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Fund, 
uh, Authority, Nigeria Surveillance Investment Authority, is also working with us on a very interesting proposal to increase laboratory testing capacity in three locations in Nigeria. So there's a lot of work happening in the background to increase our testing capacity. But we need patience. We need the patience of Nigerians to walk through this in order to do it safely. The other thing we're doing is working with both the TB program and the HIV program to convert some of the technologies that they are use, they're using for TB and HIV for testing for uh, COVID-19. That by the end of next week, we will keep announcing increase in throughput in testing. But I want to remind everyone that testing alone is not going to solve this problem. There's a lot of focus on testing. There's a lot of energy going into testing, um, both on the global scale. There's a lot of research going on to validating the uh, rapid diagnostic test kits that are being sold around the world. We are waiting for those results. We have to wait for them in order to offer them to Nigerians. Once they're validated, we will start offering these. But until they are validated, we cannot offer these tests. So we have to wait. But we're not just waiting and keeping our hands crossed. We're waiting while we're quickly improving and increasing the capacity of our existing uh, labs. So uh, we continue to urge Nigerians to be patient. Uh, we will try to meet all your demands uh, by testing through the existing labs. And as we increase our capacity, we'll open that up to a lot more people. So thank you very much.